Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new Unreal Engine 5.3 Sparse Volume Textures experimental uh, feature that they just added recently. So with that being said, I know I talked about this a little bit in my previous video, but yesterday, a Twitter Unreal Engine user, Tibalt Lambert, actually shared some insight on how to get this working. So first things first, big thank you to Lambert Tibo. So basically what Tibalt did for us is he shared his actual material graphs for us. So that's what we're going to be trying to recreate right now. So yeah, so that being said, it's very, very experimental. All right, I was talking to Tibalt yesterday. I was like, dude, what's going on? I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's an actual bug. So there's some bugs that you actually have to keep an eye out for. But if you follow this tutorial, you should be able to get this working. Additionally, if you're a, a member on my YouTube channel, I'll have... Uh, the project ready for y'all to download so you can just go ahead and migrate this uh, material to your project and mess around with it. I'm going to put this screenshot right here on my right side so I can kind of see it because obviously I am not going to memorize this. This is There's a lot of scalar stuff that we're going to have to create from here. So what I'll do here is I already have it made right here, but I'm going to create it from scratch. So I'm going to right click right here and just type in a material and I'll just name this to fire. I'll double click this. And the first thing you're going to want to change here is the actual um, node type. You actually have to change this to volume and then uh, additive right here. So I'll apply and save that. That's going to open up this extension right here, which is what you're going to want. And so basically, it's going to open up the extension. So you have albedo, emissive color, and extension. So I'm just going to go right here to my cheat sheet on my right side. Uh, press 3 and left click, and you're going to connect that to the albedo. And I'll double click this right now before I forget. I'll change this to white and I'll just move it right here. And then what I'll do is after that, I'll go to the left side here. We're going to go with the local position first. So type in right click, type in local position. And I love how he made this graph so easy to read. And we'll just do a subtraction right here. Subtract. Make sure you capitalize that S. If not, it's not going to show up. So I'll see there. And then over here, I'm going to say object local bounds so plug in the min to the subtraction and then from the subtraction we're going to do divide and then the divide part and then we'll drag this here and go right there so we have a subtraction and division which is oh man i hate math and then here is where we're going to be putting this parse you're looking for the actual texture sample parameter that's what you want right here. And I'll just connect the UV right here. All right, so next what we'll do is actually mask this out. So I'm going to grab a component mask right here. And if I click down right here, now this really depends. So this right here in his graph is the actual density. Uh, majority of the time I'm seeing, I bought like a couple of uh, VDBs from the marketplace. They are putting density in the R channel. And it looks like Tibalt did the same thing here with his uh, blueprint. So this is good. I'm just going to uncheck the G right here. So we're only masking the red channel. And then right here. And after that, he actually has a reroute node. He told me to just rename it to whatever. <laughs> so I just changed this to dense. All right. And then from there, I'm going to multiply. And then right here, I'm going to have a scalar parameter which I'm just going to do dense mult, right? And then the multiply, we're going to connect to extinction. All right, so perfect. So that's set up. Now we're going to work on our actual temperature. Again, this is going to make a lot more sense here in a second. Right now, we're just plugging and playing a lot of stuff. So I'm going to drag and drop right here. We're going to open up another component mask. And this time around, we're going to open up a G in the G channel. And I'm going to drag and drop. And again, we're going to do a reroute node right here. Again, he said it doesn't matter what you name it to. It's just labeling it, really. And this one is going to be temp. And right-click, we're going to do a remap value range. Right-click, we're going to convert all of these to a parameter. Okay? Promote parameter, promote parameter, all of them. And he has values of 0, 1. So we got 0 on the input, and there's 1 right here, and I think in 0, 1 to the target high. We can change these later on because we're going to create a material instance, so you don't necessarily have to worry about that too much. And then from the mask to the temp, the reroute to the input is what we want to. The result, we're going to again multiply. There's a lot of math in this. And again, we're going to create another scalar right here. And I'm just going to say temp mult. 
And then for the multiply node, we are going to drag. And this is where we put in the utility black body. Take this right here to another multiply mode. And we're going to create a scalar right here and title this mult. And then we'll connect this to the emissive right here. Apply and then save. And next, what we're going to do is actually import our VDBN. So you can down now if you don't want to spend some money, you can download some free ones. There is a new one right here, about 6.6 .6 gig. I tried this one, but I keep getting crashes. I think it's just too humongous. Um, I did download this one as well as about 5.5. Uh, but I did purchase some as well to just kind of try it out because, man, this is huge. If you are an Ember Gen user, I mean, there is definitely a market for this if you start selling stuff. So we have some of these already downloaded. And I have two that I'm going to try, one that I bought and then one that I just downloaded for free. So you're going to get a VDB file, start at frame zero. I'm just going to click and drag and drop it there. You don't know. So that means you don't actually need a plugin anymore to import VDBs into Unreal Engine which is muy bueno. And this is the part where I was kind of talking about the RGB stuff. Right now in his material, he has the red mask for the density and then G for the temperature, which is, that's good. That's why I said pay attention to this because you're going to need that information. So I'll just go ahead and import here. This is going to take a couple of minutes depending on your computer. So there it is. Now let's go back to our material. And in here, this is where we're going to be actually selecting that explosion so i'll apply and then save minimize and then what you're going to want to do is actually create a material instance of that material so you can expose those parameters that we created so i'll go right click create a material instance and then fire ints is okay now comes the next part is actually the volume that we talked about the heterogeneous volume that you can add now in here so i'm going to go to the add actor heterogeneous volume heterogeneous volume oh i got that right heterogeneous volume we're going to create that and then we are going to drag that material instance to the material slot of that heterogeneous volume and then once you're done with that click on animate right here double click that material instance so we can expose that material and i'm just going to turn all of this on let's put those to one and as you can see we have our little baby explosion right here, which obviously is a little bit too small. So let's increase that to maybe 50 by 50 by 50. Now, in my opinion, this kind of explosion looks much better than Niagara. I mean, even though Niagara is starting to look good, but this right here is pretty much cinematic quality so we can adjust the actual temperature to make it look more like fire to like 4500 and man that is looking pretty fire and obviously you can you can change the density on how much dense you want it to get this real time this quality real time man like been if you're familiar with this workflow in say like an offline renderer, this is pretty bananas. And what's crazy about this is like I talked about in my previous video, you can actually render this out now in path trace mode. Sparse path tracing dot H one. We can actually render this in path tracing. And obviously it's 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 kind of rough right now. But an explosion using VDB rendering wise in path tracing in a real time engine, in a game engine, this is huge. All right, so I just put our uh, volume in here, VDB in an environment, so you can kind of see what it looks like. It's looking pretty good, to be honest. Um, I can tweak the settings a lot more to kind of fine tune it, maybe make it a little bit more hotter or something like that. But this is all going to be really up to your taste. But yeah, that looks better right there. And what's cool about it is I can actually change the frames per second here. So if I want to like increase it and then slow it down, you know, like have it render at 60 and then slow it down, that would be something that I'm probably going to be messing around with right here. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, I am seeing some kind of grid lines showing up. Yeah, you can kind of see it when it goes up. 
Uh, this is very, very experimental, so I'm not sure if that's just because of that. But man, this is this is amazing because now you can import some clouds in here, uh, smoke, uh, dust, and all that stuff. It's not just about fire, but it. I mean, fire is really one of the things that I wanted to kind of get working in here. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Big thanks again to Dubal for sharing that material with us. I mean, honestly, right now, again, there's really not much documentation on this. But now, at least, we can see what the sparse volume textures is kind of capable of. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.